Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists dental associates with employment contract issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how dental associates are paid in a productivity model. So, uh, there are different ways a dental associate can be paid based upon productivity, um, but we're going to kind of go through each one of them and then maybe a discussion of which is best and some of the you know, kind of red flags you need to think about. So the most common productivity model would be net collections. And so that simply means any of the services attributed to the dentist, any of the cash that's collected by the practice attributed to those services will be considered the collections. And then normally the dental associate would get a percentage of um, those collections. And it can be done you know, a number of different ways. One, it could be pure net collections, meaning you eat what you kill. You, you do these, you would get a percentage of it. If it's just pure net collections based, it's probably going to be somewhere between 35 to 45 percent, although 45 would be pretty high, to be honest, for a dentist. Um, so probably more between 35 to 40 percent of collections. Uh, and that would be it. They would do a reconciliation at the end of the month. And then you'd be paid out, whatever it was, uh, and and that's ha that's that's it. That's your compensation. Um, next thing would be if you're on some kind of base salary plus net collection. So, for instance, let's say you're being paid one hundred twenty thousand a year, then the employer may say, "All right, uh, once you've collected ten thousand, so to cover your base salary, then you'll get." X percentage of the net collections above that. Now that's going to be a smaller percentage, somewhere between 15 to 25% in that scenario where you have a guaranteed base. So you can't go below 120 in this scenario, but you do have some opportunity if you're you know, productive to, to get more than that. So that, that's probably the most common way is to kind of have a hybrid of base salary and net collections. The, the problem with a pure net collections agreement is uh, especially at the beginning. So let's say a dental associate starts the practice. Well, if the kind of accounts receivable cycle for a you know dental service that's done through insurance is somewhere between 30 to 90 days, you could be working for a month or even two without seeing almost any net collections at all. And most people aren't willing to work for a thousand dollars, you know, per month or something. I mean, I mean, it's going to be more than that, but just using that as an example. So, uh, and then another consideration, and these are like the two biggest red flags are just starting without making, you know, with making little money in the first couple of months. Uh, there are some contracts that will state after the contract is terminated, the dental associate, you know, will not be paid anything else that's outstanding. If you're on a net collect, pure net collections based employment agreement and the language states you won't be paid after the contract terminates, you, you essentially worked for free for two to three months because all those collections that are outstanding up until the date of termination aren't going to go to you. They're going to go to the firm and you just work for free. So you want to absolutely make certain if there's some kind of net collections based agreement, either one, pure net collections or hybrid of base salary and net collections. There has to be language in there that states you will receive all of the services, uh, you know, all of the money for the services that that were attributed to you and collected by the practice. You're going to get that regardless of when it's collected by the practice. I mean, some places will try to limit to 60 or 90 days, which for the most part is, is reasonable. Um, but ideally, it would be no matter when it was collected, you would get a part of it because one thing to think about, I'm not saying everyone's going to do this, but uh, with a short window, we have had instances of practices sitting on those claims and not submitting them timely, just so they knew that they would get past that window so the dentist wouldn't get the collections that they deserved. That's some sneaky shit, uh, but it's happened. So anyway, think of it that way. It needs to be language that says you're going to get paid all of the collections that they receive. And then also, if you have both the uh, base salary and collections, uh, it needs to say the same thing as well. Now, different uh, practices are going to reconcile it at different intervals. So for the most part, most, most places will do it 
uh, monthly. However, if it is like a hybrid of base and net collection, some places they'll do it quarterly. So they would just take, uh, you know, your base salary for those three months and then anything that you collected above that, you would then get that percentage and then it would be paid out at the end of the quarter. Uh, you also want language on the contract that states exactly when it will be paid out. Uh, another scenario could be uh, a dentist could earn a bonus, but then terminate the agreement and leave before it gets paid. And then the language in the contract may state they don't get paid anything once the contract terminates, and then you're out, out of your bonus, even though you've earned it. So you need to make certain there's more language in there about the bonuses that states when it will be paid out and if the contract terminates prior to the payment, you're, you still will receive it when it normally would be paid. Uh, a couple other ways that it can uh, kind of have a productivity model for a dentist. You can do it by encounters. Um, some practices will just have a list, like a fee schedule, and then the dentist would simply receive this much for doing this and this much for doing that. That's pretty rare. I mean, honestly, for the most part, for dental associates, it's either a daily rate or a base salary or the base salary plus net collections. It's pretty rare you'll see purely net collections based agreements. It's a pretty big red flag. Um, if the employer is not willing to even give you a moderate guarantee, I, it just trust me on this. It's usually a bad sign and it's they've had a lot of turnover or they're just cheap and they don't want to guarantee anything to the dentist. Uh, and then in those situations, it usually doesn't end up well. Uh, at least that's that's my experience with it. So uh, anyway, those are a couple ways of having a productivity model for a dental associate. Uh, if you have any questions about your uh, employment agreement uh, as a dental associate, you can always call my law firm at the phone number listed below in the description. Uh, or you can reach us through our website, ShellyLaw.com. That's C-H-E-L-L-E-Law.com. And I appreciate you watch video. Thanks.